Hello everyone, so this video I'll show you how to use uh, Ancloth on humans, like this. So uh, this is uh, how I set it up. So I'll restart everything and then I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so I'll delete all this um, Ancloth stuff. I'll create a plane first, okay. Then I'll go to my top view, just to open up my plane. Delete it off the extra parts, so I'll delete off all these faces. So I end up with only um only this frame like this. Okay, so something like this below. Okay, so I'm also going to stretch this part a bit closer. So the neck area doesn't uh. So it will be closer to the neck area, and then it won't collide with the head also when it falls down. Okay, so I just position it like this. I'll delete the old one, and then I'll push it to the top. Okay, so it, this will become my new one. I'm gonna freeze, delete, hidden. Uh, I mean, I delete history, freeze, and center the pivot. And then I'll go to my modeling to add some divisions to it. Three division values. So all this, uh. And cloth now has uh, three division levels. Okay, go to my FX and cloth create and cloth. Okay, so all this uh, and cloth I'm gonna give it the same settings, one hundred and fifty, and then stickiness one. Oh, sorry, actually I should do a silk first. So I do a silk first, one hundred and fifty one. Okay, next one silk replace one hundred and fifty one. Second one, silk, replace 151. And the last one is already set before already. Okay, so all these three and cloth is set. Now, when we play, it will fall down, but it will not collide yet. Why? Because we haven't um, added the human body as the passive collider. Okay, so we need to go back and add all these humans as the passive collider. And cloth, create passive collider on all these humans. All the humans. Friction 101. 101. 101. And I go back to my nucleus with control the gravity. I'll give it a gravity of 150. Okay, now I go back to the start. I re re let it uh, recalculate everything for me to see. Hopefully, it looks good. So it's actually looking not too bad. Oh yeah, I forgot to show my reference. So I'm trying to create um the side of the cloth of like this uh female character over here. Okay, so you can see the cloth that goes down like a long cardigan sort of thing. Oh, so that's my reference. So press three uh to activate smooth preview on my cloths, and then actually all of this is quite suitable. So um, and then how it sticks to the body, how it is uh sticky. You can go and adjust the friction level higher or lower if you want. You can try stickiness level higher. It can help also. So uh, if it keeps cutting into the body, you push it higher. I think that would be better. Okay. Also, can try other presets lah. As I mentioned to you before, there's a lot of presets you can play around with. But I'm not a super Ancroft expert, so I'll just use some uh, default ones that is good enough for me to bring to ZBrush. And I'll leave it at that. Okay, so let's say if I really like this, okay, this, uh, this one at the center. Actually, I really like this one at the side also. So both of these, I quite like it. But I'll choose this one. And then I'll export it once first, and I'll bring it back again. So um, I'll say long cross two. Uh, current frame is frame eighteen. So previously I've exported other frames, so you can see other files that I have over there. So I exported frame eighteen. Now I'll import frame eighteen back. Okay, so now I have this uh, frame eighteen, which is uh, just a plain cloth. Oh, and then you can tell the behind is not too perfect, but we can. So you adjust this in uh, ZBrush now. Okay, so um, I want to do a smooth preview. So not a smooth preview, a really smooth to it. So it's a baking smooth. So I'll go to modeling tab, mesh smooth. Okay, so now the smooth is break into the model. It's big, big. 
and then um yeah and then i'll just uh position it back to default and then i'll export it or you can just put it at a size okay or i just for this video purpose i want you all to know that this is an exported version so i export it again as frame 18 smooth okay now i can go into my zbrush okay create a duplicate of this uh, sub tool so i have two of this as a duplicate so that i can use one of the duplicate for me to import stuff so i just use my window explorer to copy the path and then i would oops paste the path in and then i'll load frame 18 smooth okay so the so the the cloth that bring in looks like this i'll center the pivot a little bit and make it bigger okay so the points is pretty good um 20 000. press ctrl d once to activate another subdivision level so it becomes eighty thousand. and then we have some very nice looking cloth very natural looking um, created from the software itself so we can use this you know like a cloak like a cape like a anything anything you want so you can see the display doesn't look entirely correct so that's because the display quality is under tools you must activate double then we can see double sided okay so i hope you guys learn from this uh, tutorial uh, make sure you when you try to shape this cloth double click on the dynamic draw size so the draw size will become super big it's very very helpful uh, when your draw size is big you really need the draw size to be big you want to have a full control of your of your cloth and then you need to off it always off this when you're using snake hook or the move brush and then you can shape your cloth better you don't want to use a small brush and try to adjust things here and there and then it becomes it becomes very messy oh, you use a big brush and then you, and then the it's kind of hard to explain uh, but using a big brush really helps a lot uh, and that gives you the gravity and the right control over your model Okay, so I hope you guys learned from that. And uh, yep, that's all for this tutorial. So you can also export any of this from any frame. So just pick a frame that you like. The only thing is, uh, as you can see, I cannot jump through the frames. And you let it recompute again, probably from frame 15. And then you understand. Yeah, it doesn't work. You need to restart the computing. Then I can export the frames again. Okay, so that's why I need to uh, export. And re-import and then export again. That will be a better workflow. Alright, see you all in the next video. Bye bye.